everyone. It's Wendy Barlow from Cohen Tucker and Atis. Um, today, got a few different topics to cover. Um, there's been a lot of things going on, and so we're going to give you some updates as well as just give you some general tips um, that you may find helpful dealing with the immigration process. So first things first, let's talk about Saturday interviews. Yes, they are a real thing. USCIS is currently scheduling interviews on Saturdays. Uh, most of these interviews are naturalization applications, so N-400 interviews, but they can also schedule interviews for adjustment of status, so green card applications. So if you get a notice in the mail and your interview is scheduled on a Saturday, that is not a mistake. You should appear as scheduled and hopefully all goes well with your interview. Um, and, you know, it, it is something that some people have don't believe is true. I've actually had seen people go to USCIS to confirm that the appointment is actually on Saturday because they just didn't believe it. So again, it is a real thing. The officers are conducting interviews um, as normal. You can bring an attorney with you if you choose to those interviews. But again, if you get it in the mail, it is a real thing. If for some reason you cannot appear on a Saturday because of religious um, observations, just contact USCIS to reschedule and the appointment can be rescheduled. Um, if there's otherwise no real reason why, besides you don't want to go on a Saturday, that's not a reason. Go on Saturday, have your interview. Okay, next topic. Um, what happens after the interview? No matter what type of interview you have with USCIS, a decision is going to be made. Um, officers in general have up to 120 days from the date of your interview to make a decision. So you can check the case status online. If you're signed up for an, an um, my USCIS account, you can get notifications about it. Um, you can um, check the status every day if you choose. But please know, officers have up to 120 days to make a decision. They're not obligated to make the decision the same day. They're not obligated to make it within the same week. Um, a lot of interviews, a lot of decisions are made relatively quickly after the interview. But just because it's not doesn't mean it's bad. It just means something needed more time to be reviewed. Or maybe a supervisor had to review your case. Because maybe you have a criminal history or you were previously in removal proceedings. Some things just take a little longer. After 120 days, you can follow up with USCIS about the status of your case. But before then, it's typically not a good idea to follow up because they simply can tell you we have 120 days. Okay, next topic, the I-693 or medical examination. This is only for individuals filing for adjustment of status or a green card. You have to submit a medical examination as part of your application. You can mail it in with your application or you can wait and either send it in when you get a request for evidence or take it to your interview. As a general rule, we have clients take it to the interview with them. Um, right now it's not been as much of an issue because USCIS has announced flexibility regarding expiration um, of the document, but in the past documents often the medical would often expire um, or it wasn't, you know, it was lost. So we've always just had clients take the actual medical to the interview. That way it's done a few weeks before the interview. So it's nice and valid and it's submitted promptly within 60 days of signature. Again, that's, that rule is on hold, but it's just something that we've done and you make sure the officer actually has it. It's not something that gets lost. The reason we do this is medicals are not cheap. You know, depending on which doctor you go to, it can be several hundred dollars. And to have to do that multiple times can be a lot. Um, another thing with medicals, COVID-19 vaccinations. COVID-19 is a required vaccination now. It is done in multiple steps. You have to be fully vaccinated, meaning one, first and second shots, by the time your medical is completed. So please make sure you're allotting time to um, have that vaccination if you haven't already done so. And if you haven't been vaccinated, start now. This way, when you go to your medical, it's done. 
Um, another thing is ask the doctor for a copy of the medical. You will be given the medical in a sealed envelope. In that envelope, um, you can't open it. It has to be given to USCIS sealed. If it's open, you have to get a new one and resubmit it. So it's very important to make sure everything's right or there's no issues in the medical. You are entitled to a copy. So please ask your doctor for a copy. Um, it's important because I've seen people's cases get held up because a doctor forgot to check a box or conduct a test that doesn't um, exist anymore or used an outdated form. Those forms expire and USCIS typically will not take the old ones. So just have the doctor give you a copy, take a look at it. If you have an attorney, have the attorney take a look at it too. Okay, next topic, um, biometrics notices. Uh, when you free file, a lot of applications with USCIS require a um, biometrics appointment. This is where you get um, fingerprinted and photographed, and they take some biographic information for running background and security checks. Now, you typically get those appointment notices two to four weeks after filing. There have been some sporadic delays due to COVID. Um, there were substantial delays before, but that seems to have actually corrected itself. This appointment, you're going to go. The instructions are on the form. Follow those instructions. Now, in some instances, USCIS does not need biometrics. It's not that they're not running security and background checks on you. It's just that they're able to reuse biometrics that you've previously given. If that is the case, USCIS will also send a notice regarding that. So you will know that you do not need um, to have a fingerprint appointment. If you do not receive a notice saying they're going to reuse your biometrics, then and you don't get a biometrics appointment notice, follow up with USCIS, or if you have an attorney, reach out to your attorney. Okay, and just the last couple things. Um, for you to know regarding employment authorizations. There's been some updates lately. So first things first, um, individuals um, who are filing for employment authorization based on categories such as um, pending, uh, approved by VAWA petition or withholding of removal, USCIS is going to actually begin issuing um, employment authorization cards that are valid for two years for additional classes of individuals. This is great news because it will, um, you know, give you a longer employment authorization, may result in you having to file less forms. It's also good because it takes applications away from USCIS, which is severely backlogged right now regarding employment authorization. So there'll be less applications, which hopefully means that they can get processing times back down to uh, a reasonable amount. For those of you who are um, here on E2 visas or L2 visas, so spouses of individuals who are here on E2 or L1, if you have an I-94 that has a designation um, E2 spouse or L2 spouse, you no longer need employment authorization to work. Your I-94 will be sufficient proof of that. So that is something that will also take some of the applications out of the processing. Now, if you're on an E-2 visa or L-2 visa here and you do not have that designation, you still will need an employment authorization card. So you can either apply for it or if you want, you can travel outside the country and return and you should be able to um, get that designation on your new I-94. And finally, um, for those of you who are interested in H-1B visas, the H-1B registration period, sorry about that, will be opening very shortly. It opens on March 1st at 12 p.m. noon Eastern Standard Time. It will run until March 18th at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. During that period of time, employers can submit registrations for potential employees. Please note, employers, you can only file one registration per an employee. You can file for five employees, but you can't file five registrations for one employee. If you do that, the registrations will all be invalidated. So one registration per an employee. 
for employees. Multiple employers can file registrations for you. You just can't be registered by the same employer multiple times. I hope this information was helpful. If you have any questions about what we've talked about today or anything else related to immigration, please call our office at 212-840-0050. Thank you. Have a great day.